one more fu- oh yeah I need scripts oh boy <laughs> where do I even begin <laughs> You have to make some init scripts, and so for anyone who's not in thing... like the non system D space, when we what, what do we mean by these init scripts? I know, I know this is something a lot of like open RC people always talk about init scripts with all this. What is what what do we mean by this? Well, an init script is a script that is understandable, <laughs> makes sense, fair enough. But there, so system D has um this thing called services. Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to sit here and, you know, pretend I have a hard on for system D, but I will admit that Linux in general, it needs a system D. I know that's hard to say for even as someone who loves OpenRC, but we need it because there's like a hundred distros. And one problem that, you know, in the past was an issue was that everyone had to sit and maintain their own init scripts for all these distros. And it was just a pain for distro managers. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and package developers, of course. So mm-hmm. system D kind of streamlines this with their whole service thing where like, you know, you basically just set a few variables. But the nice thing about that is it will work on every distro, almost every distro, um, without any sort of hacks or dependencies. And that's fine. I, I have nothing against that. Um, so basically, anyway, there are these things called user services, and this is what system D uses and we lucked out so much on user services recently getting imported into OpenRC. Um and what is a user service you may be asking? Mm-hmm. Well you know how you have those little services on boot that are like oh starting uh bullshit starting uh SSHD yeah, or whatever yeah, like yeah. that. All that stuff. Um well user services are like that except they start when the user logs in. Like mm-hmm. for example you might want to start debuff you might want to start uh Pipewire. In fact, I believe uh, Gentoo, we're going to start moving away from our old Pipewire scripts and start relying on user services for that. Mm-hmm. Um, they're kind of like auto start, but for what they don't depend on XDG. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, so that's all nice and dandy. So, and why is that needed? Because, well, when the user logs in, you know, GDM, it starts the script, it has to start the user services for you know, GNOME and all that, because we want to actually be running GNOME as, you know, the user, not like root or something garbage like that. Um, I have actually met someone who runs everything as root, and I am worried about him and his family. But... Yeah, okay. (laughs) (laughs) So, right now we have a bunch of little scripts here. You basically have to define all these yourself. They're the ones that get called from uh, your little open our C script or C file. Um, and uh, don't think I could like share my screen or anything like that. So I'm not going to worry about that. But we, you can actually look inside them a little bit here. You can go into, you have the GitHub site open. You could go to data and then open our C and then you can just click any of these. Um, for example, like Gnome Shell Dash Wayland, you can actually see the little hacks I introduced there. Um, um, where is it? I lost my tabs. Uh, yeah, I have like eight hundred. <laughs> uh, which file were you saying? Um, data open RC, and then you can go to say like Gnome Shell Wayland. Yep. Okay. And this right here is a user service. You can ignore all the weird little, like, you know, export hacks I've done there. That's temporary. <laughs> but um, basically, you can see there the command there where it literally just starts GNOME Shell. That's kind of it. Um, and this is going to be a user service. And what's kind of nice about this is this also opens doors for session restarting. I'm not sure if you're aware, but with GNOME, um, you, on Wayland, you can't really restart gnome shell like you Mm. have to log out log back in all that junk um you could with x11 but Mm -hmm. right uh, right, right. so this will make that uh, possible maybe in kind of slightly whoever whatever um because in this case you know we could literally just restart gnome shell and it'll restart Mm. like you know everything else will remain running it's probably not a good idea to do that but it opens the doors which is pretty nice and it's kind of why um, you know, Adrian, he wanted to move away from, you know, basically his own or their own like 
hacked up system D clone <laughs> sort mm-hmm. of thing. Um, so basically they're user services. Um, the one there's like one specifically for like GNOME login. I actually have in the Mason file here. You don't have to open that. Um, but um, it basically creates like sim links of stuff. For example, mm-hmm. that little file there called GSD. Basically, with GNOME, there's a bunch of these GSD dash like I don't know housekeeping GSD dash uh, uh, keyboard. There's a bunch of little settings daemon daemon stuff, mm-hmm. and I basically just sim link those and then make them a dependency, and it works out pretty well. Um, so yeah, there's so basically this becomes an issue with some init systems, like mm-hmm. for example Slackware, and like I said, good, I remembered Slackware this morning. I've almost forgot it existed, <laughs> but with uh, Slackware, they have a weird init system, and they don't actually have user services. So their solution to this, and this is not the best solution, but it's a solution nonetheless, is to basically just pull the old code back in. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, this is something that was mentioned makes, on the Arctic forum. Ah, uh, yeah, this was. Um, I just saw it this morning when I noticed that the guy was complaining about uh his little code not working the, the ah. same issue i had until we get user db working i have to wait for this e login d developer to wake up from his slumber <laughs> so so slack we just kind of reverted it and it looks like that's been working for them um i i think i actually saw someone on reddit like mocking someone <laughs> <laughs> and basically saying actually it works here yeah um but you know redditors and their not understanding anythingness, mm-hmm. but um, <laughs> that was a very honest shake there. <laughs> no, I, I I saw the exact comment you're talking about. I think I included that in my video. <laughs> yeah, um, I think I saw that one too. Um, so pretty much, the, yeah, they just reverted the code, and that I think Adrian said was weird, but he, and believe in his blog post, he actually said you could just do that. Mm-hmm. It's more work. But the only other solution is that they implement either they either like hack up their own like a uh, user daemon thingy, which they can do that. It's not hard, honestly. Or they could just uh yes drops gnome. <laughs> <laughs> you know, looking at you Arctic's developers. Mm-hmm. But um but yeah, that's it. That's kind of everything. Like I think I've brushed on everything i could brush on uh um like user db um ah, hey, work oh did, did you lose me no no can he i'm oh, sorry discord is acting up oh so um <laughs> typical but uh one thing for the most part everything works i am actually on gnome 49 as we speak um 49.1 actually um there were some bugs with 49 that need to be fixed but um everything works besides auto start um because i don't use that so i haven't gotten to it yet but i'm gonna get to it um so yeah rtx goes up i literally have in my notes here they are morons <laughs> uh slackware got it um basically yeah they just reverted the code <laughs> 